What have you learned from your leaders? 20 years ago, I moved to South Carolina for a new job. We had a team building exercise, tackle football. My plant manager, the linebacker, tackled a player out of bounds and body slammed him to the ground. I can still remember hearing the crack. My first week, my li the linebacker asked my boss a question. He didn't know the answer, but I did. So I started to answer when the linebacker turned and screamed at me. If I want any blankety blank out of you, I will let you know it. You could have heard a pin drop in the office. The linebacker is now a motivational speaker, sharing how companies can squeeze the efficiency out of their people. Would you like to work for a leader like the linebacker? I didn't either. I quit after six months. In the last 20 years, studies show abusive behavior has doubled in the workplace. As command and control companies continue to reward bad behavior from bullies in the pursuit of results. Especially since 60% of these toxic bullies are the boss. Why do they act this way? Most say they're too busy to be respectful. This lazy leadership assumes employees are lazy and can't be trusted. The US military has moved away from command and control discovering plans don't survive unpredictable terrorists. Commanding officers now issue a commander's intent describing the desired results, such as taking a city with no civilian casualties. Then soldiers adapt by making battlefield decisions to reach the goal while avoiding harm's way. 10 years ago, I was working as a quality supervisor in adult diapers. Just to be clear, in the test lab, not in diapers. <laughs> when I was offered a job in an automotive startup, my response, get me out of this crappy business. <laughs> I became employee number 25 out of what would become a plant of 2,500 people. We were given a commander's intent to build a better plant than our coworkers in Germany. My dream job, solving problems, as a manager in a startup. I told a room full of people, I love my job. But everything changed after that day. A new plant manager was sent in to help. We'll call him the kicker. The kicker gave a motivational pep talk to the management team. If you guys were responsible for putting a man on the moon, it would have never happened because you're all too stupid. I felt like I'd been body slammed by a kicker. <laughs> Over the next five years, 7,000 people left the plant. Here's a list of management techniques I saw used during this time. Yelling, late night phone calls, raised office temperature, reduced desk space, and repeated threats of firing and demotion. Let's look at another list. Verbal abuse, sleep deprivation, environmental control, cramped confinement, and controlled fear. These are approved military interrogation methods. <laughs> this toxic environment affected everyone. During this time, I walked up to Charles, my production manager, and I started to yell at him. Why'd you run those blankety blank parts when I told you not to? Charles looked at me and said, Michael, just stop. That's not you. Charles was right. I was becoming someone I didn't respect. I had started to believe that yelling and being disrespectful would get me results. I had learned lazy leadership. Something needed to change. As a problem solver, HR asked me why 7,000 people had left. Looking at the data, I saw that they liked the pay, the benefits, their coworkers, and the work environment. So why would they leave? Too much overtime, bad management, 
unfair HR, and breaks were just too short. 7,000 people didn't leave because of the carrot. They quit because of the stick. My management reviewed these results and then ignored them. In five years, I went from a job I loved to one that made me physically sick and turned me into a lazy leader. Realizing my management wasn't going to change, I did. I became employee number 7001 to leave because of a culture of lazy leadership. Let's look at what this controlling behavior cost companies. In 2007, Cisco Systems was number 11 on the best places to work list. Bad behavior still cost them $12 million. Now maybe that doesn't sound like a lot of money for a company like Cisco, but how about $29 million? Divide that by 7,001 employees and you get $4,142, the average cost to replace an employee. Or how about a whopping $300 billion due to lost productivity because of work-related stress in the U.S. every single year? Abusive bosses lead to expensive losses, and these costs grow as they tighten their control. Are you stressed when you drive your car? Not really, but put you in the passenger seat and you're looking for a brake pedal. <laughs> we like to be in the driver's seat. That's why lazy leadership is so easy. Hello, my name is Michael and I am a recovering lazy leader. My leaders taught me lazy leadership, but thanks to Charles, I realized I needed to change my leadership style. And I found the best leadership model in the world. You guys want to know what it is? <laughs> the leadership style that helps you manage you. Leadership is like a fingerprint. It's unique to each leader. You need to be intentional with developing your leadership fingerprint, or you will fall back into lazy leadership. You need to study diverse styles of leadership before trying to lead others. But how do we grow the right kind of leaders? Since the battlefield has changed, so is the military. No longer promoting people just based on battles won, but how they prepare their soldiers to be leaders. As a manager in a startup, I looked for diverse experience, knowledge, and passion for my future leaders. I found it in a head chef, a motorcycle racer, and a restaurant owner, each with their own unique leadership style. I didn't look for many me's, the mistake of lazy leaders. Being a problem-solving leader, we trained in complex problem-solving, preparing us for problems we had never seen before. We developed our commander's intent, including a goal to focus on, then we solved our biggest problems step by step. Ultimately, they all grew into leaders responsible for their own areas. Tomorrow's workplace will require innovative leaders different from today's command and control bullies. Let's look at a garage startup for an example. Bobby Edwards told me, mother is the necessity of all invention and my mom was constipated. As a result, Bobby and his mom made a big splash by creating the Squatty Potty, even landing a deal on Shark Tank. I asked Bobby, what kind of leader are you? He said, I never even considered myself a leader until success led to investors who wanted Bobby to put more control within his company. His people came to him worried that the investors would destroy the DNA of Squatty Potty by replacing Bobby. Luckily, Bobby realized he needed better processes and more people, but he didn't need control. He was surrounded by a talented team of smart people he considered family. He shared his commander's intent, including sharing the financial records with the entire company, allowing his family to understand 
what it takes for Squatty Potty to be successful. Since Bobby found his innovative leadership fingerprint, everything has been unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to work for a leader like Bobby? My new job is pretty cool. I still solve problems, but now I work with power tools. <laughs> I shared my speech with my 95-year-old grandmother. She recalled, I walked out of my first job because of bad behavior from a lazy leader. That was almost 80 years ago. Lazy leadership is so last century. We're in the middle of a generational change in leadership. Millennials now make up the largest portion of the workforce. We need to be the generation to change from the lazy leadership of command and control. Because we did put a man on the moon, and we can find a better leadership model. Today, you have all of the leadership knowledge in the world at your fingertips. Be intentional with learning leadership. Let go of control, treat others with respect, and don't be a lazy leader. Because developing your unique leadership fingerprint is the cure for lazy leadership. Thank you.